So to start, if you uh, could close your eyes or uh, lower your gaze so you can uh, suspend the uh, visual and the distractions, let's say. So just for this meeting, you can uh, let go, let's say, of the past, meaning whatever occurred earlier yesterday. And you can let go of the future as well. No need to think about what's next. Simply rest as being, rest as presence. And uh, there's no need to engage in whatever appears to you. Simply Notice whatever is being noticed in a, a sort of indifference in a, without any interest in engaging or um, correcting, adjusting. The sensations within your body, whichever way they arise. Let them be as they are. There's nothing you need to do right now. Resting as being a sort of celebration, appreciation, recognition of being, which is what always is. It's not. Uh, being someone. In uh, being, which is our true nature, which is the evident, the obvious, There is no good or bad, better, worse. It's uh, just a quality of peace, of presence, of, one could say, uh, not knowing. But it's not a, a not knowing that's lacking anything. It's a, a 
like the ocean. There is no denial of whatever appears, thoughts, sensations, images. They're there like okay, a flock of geese that flies by. over the field. You perceive the flock of geese from impersonal, you know, disinterested way. There is appreciation, but there is no Pursuit, no avoidance. It's an effortless presence. Beingness is effortless. Like the sunshine shining onto everything equally, effortlessly. Effort is, is in maintaining a certain position. My point of view, my beliefs. It takes effort to be somebody and to maintain this structure. But the, the peace the inner tranquility of our true nature requires no effort. It's a, more of a sinking into being, sinking, resting. as the unformulated and uncreated it's transparent aware presence
everything that appears to you, whichever thought, whatever you perceive, whatever sensations appear to you. They are not apart from you. You being the reality, whatever it is that perceives, perceives a certain event, perceives a perception. A thought, an image, that perception, that image is not out there. It's not somewhere out there. It is known intimately within yourself. It's not somewhere in your brain or somewhere in your, in your synoptic or your nervous system. Perception is the awareness that perceives it. completely and totally intimate with the knowing, with the reality that knows it. Notice right now the hearing of these words. Are the words out there somewhere being heard via waves traveling over some internet system and then vibrating through a microphone and appearing in your ear, hitting your ear and bouncing off your eardrum? Is that what it is? your experience. The model about your experience is not your experience. Notice right now the hearing. You are hearing the hearing, the you that is hearing the hearing, is the hearing itself, is the I awareness, I awareness, taken on the form as hearing, never leaving myself to go out there somewhere, grab some words, translate them and understand them. That's a different function. It's a model. We take on the form of the sound of a passing airplane. Mm -hmm. 
you never experience an airplane up there. You experience awareness as You experience the image of an airplane. Gray, shining in the sky. You experience the image of somebody sitting on a chair. This image Where is it? What is it? Where is this somebody? sitting on the chair. Sensation. Sensation. What is the sensation? The sensation of your back against the chair, of your bosom bottom against the seat, your feet on the ground. In the absence of words, in the absence of memory, in the absence of the past. What does it do? Perceive someone sitting on a chair. A thought, an image, a belief, an idea, like a flock of geese passing by. They fly east. And then the cardinal flies by, flying west. Then a Leaves fall off the tree, dancing in the space of awareness. The intimacy of awareness never actually broken never actually interrupted in any way. This intimacy is truth, which is another word for love. For love is another word word for truth. And in, in this intimacy, in this love, there is no separation. There is no one out there that's hurting you that's behaving badly or
That's an interpretation. There's no problem with interpretations, but mistaking the interpretation to be the reality, the reality of God, the reality of being, to be truth. Interpretations are many within one body-mind, within one lifetime. Millions of interpretations. Within a group of friends, millions of interpretations that vary and differ. In a society, millions and millions of interpretations. But there is one thing that is not an interpretation. That is not the result of mind activity, which is your true nature, which is this transparent, aware presence, the reality of consciousness. in presence and as presence is God's eternity and infinity, God's reality. Upon this recognition, you can also recognize that your entire experience, whichever way it appears to you, is God's will. There is only one will. One reality. Which is a reality of consciousness. The reality of being, of presence, the I am, the I. Which is not what you imagine I to be. What you imagine I to be is an appearance. It's an image that which imagines is not an image that which perceives is not an image is not perceived the eye that perceives is not perceived
the infinite invisible. Do not define yourself via the orbit, orbit of your thoughts and feelings, which are ancient and stale, repeating themselves over and over and over and over. You can drop that definition, that spin, as you recognize awareness, which is that which perceives right now, not the instrument of perception but the reality of perception. So if you have any questions, please make sure you unmute your mic. And you're welcome to turn your video on. So any, any questions? Uh, hi, Aglin. This is, this is George. OK, George. Hello, George. Okay. Hi there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know quite how to word this. I don't have a question. I am upset. Uh, my mind is telling me all sorts of stories. I've had some minor bad news about being treated unfairly. Now, who's been treated unfairly? The separate self. So I'm just angry, okay? Disappointed. And when I hear you speak, I get it. There's no separate self. You talk about the airplanes. I just, you know, they're just the perceptions. It's like, I get everything you say. Yes, I understand. And I can't use that understanding. In other words, I'm still upset. I'm still the separate self, which I, mean, I know is a fiction, but feels so real. And so I thought I would 
talk to you now while I'm really upset. I mean, um, you know, while the emotion is present, maybe I don't know what to say. Yes. That's all I can say. Yes. So, yes, so there is a, a model. The model says, I and the content of this I model is a whole set of rules and regulations, rules of engagement. and uh, conditions. And uh, the rules of engagement in conditions are about not only myself, but also others in the world and the society and God knows what else. And uh, of course, This model doesn't have any control. It's just kind of shuffling and reshuffling its model, but it's staying more or less within the already more or less agreed internal parameters. But the world out there, whatever that is, meaning our experience, are random, there is, there, is, there is no predictability. And so when there is a match, it's bingo. And when there is a mismatch, it's all hell, all hell, broke loose, broke loose. All hell breaks loose, that's correct, yeah. <laughs> all hell breaks loose. <laughs> so, At once we have adopted this model, which is sort of, it's not a conscious, we're not consciously adopting this model, but once this model, let's say, is operating, uh, we will experience uh, thoughts and sensations that are sort of agreeable, agreeable because they're more or less conform with our internal uh, model or disagreeable. And so what we experience, we experience bodily sensations and thoughts that combined together form upsetness or form, wow, I'm so glad, you know, they're really, they're on board. So these emotions, which are sort of a sort of a dance of the sensation, of a sensation and a thought, a thought that somehow they're mixed, they're mixed together to sort of form what is called an emotion, a negative emotion. And we often speak about the possibility of perceiving an emotion as a neutral thought and neutral sense, bodily sensation. But of course, when the emotion is, is spinning, uh, it seems that it's not possible to sort of have that capacity to see the neutrality of the sensation and neutrality of the thought. And so the, I repeat the invitation that the model I am upset has to be suspended, you need to suspend I am upset and look slightly below that. I don't, when I say suspended, I don't mean denial. I'm saying like, let me say sort of, okay, I see what's going on here, I'm upset. Let me look a little deeper. So you, if you look a little deeper, you will find that there is a story, a bundle of thoughts, expectations, memories, images, etc., which are, which we refer to usually as mentation, 
you know, the, the mental realm, you know, the subtle, the subtle internal realm. And there is also another subtle internal realm, which is sensation. Sensation, <coughs> the sensation varies when you look within your body, you have to sort of, to sort of go to the sensation like you're going to, you're like you're looking sort of at a, at a painting and, 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 you know, sometimes when you look at a painting, it's sort of, the more you're looking, it, it starts to, say more, it starts to reveal more to it as you just sort of remain looking, you know, you're, you're not searching for anything. You're not searching for something in the painting. You just, available. you're available. So it's this, it's a, it's this sort of uh, looking that will reveal is, let me just not say what it will reveal, but that's the direction. Now, the other thing to comprehend, and we may be available to comprehend it or not, I don't know, or, which is that we like, we, we like our, we, we, we enjoy our drama. It doesn't seem so off offhand. It seems that no, I, I don't. I don't like that. I mean, I don't. I don't. This person did this to me. Disappointed me. And I don't like it. I don't. I don't want that. But in the same time, no one is forcing us to be upset. Outside of, <laughs> outside of ourselves, anyway. <laughs> I mean, um, so we have the capacity to see that. We have to see that. Okay, well, that's the direction I'm choosing. Ignorance is a personal choice. <laughs> it's the choice I choose to imagine that my beliefs, my opinions, my structure is really important. My internal me, the whole structure of me, which took me 40, 50, 60, 70 years to, to, to refine is really important. And that's the me. I mean, that's, that's, that's me. You will offend, you're offending me, meaning something within my structure. You know, maybe node 682 has been disrupted or something didn't fit correctly within this node and now there are practices that speak about non-resistance not resisting the sensation sort of opening yourself up to the sensation i don't like to speak of that approach of hand. I like to invite understanding, that to invite understanding that in fact, there is nothing happening. It's just some internal weather, which is completely neutral, a sensation in the body, and that's God's dance throughout your body. And thought, which is God's spring through your mind. It's neutral, completely neutral. It's like how the sun is shining through the window. Right now it's shining this way. You come back an hour later, it's shining differently. I have no conditions about that. And it's completely neutral and it'd be completely illogical to have some conditions about the weather. Similarly, it is illogical to have conditions over the world body mind, over your neighbor, over your partner, over your friend. Now,
you can get upset. You can feel upsetness. And then you can let it go because you realize that it's God's freedom that is operating through your friend who disappointed you. It's not your own personal will or their personal will. Because in fact, your will and your friend's will is basically just perceiving whatever you perceive and acting based upon your perceptions. There is a certain, a certain set of perceptions and at some point there is a, a dominant thought that goes, oh yeah, that's the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna ignore, I'm having a problem with George, I'm gonna ignore, I, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna call him, you know, whatever it is. That somehow this thought arises as being the, the thought that's the yes thought. And so I will not call you and I will not go to the appointment, you know, that, that was scheduled between me and you. Is no, there is nothing personal. But we have the option of creating a personal model. And, and, and then we can experience all these emotions because without the personal model, how could we experience emotions? I wouldn't be upset at you or at you if you made a promise to me to come at three o'clock and, and didn't, if I don't have a personal model that, oh, you're, you acted bad and you should have acted good and you're, you should have, and whatever. There's gotta, there has to be a person A and person B and the whole modeling of that, that box, you know. So, but that's how we experience the emotions, you see. Uh, yeah, what I notice is, and just what you say, first I notice my mind is going through this story, how this shouldn't be, this person, no, 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 no. Mind keeps going the story, okay? And keeps repeating that same story over and over again. And then, as you say, I can see the, I can separate the I am upset into the story and the body sensation. Yes. So now I can see the body sensation. Yes. And, and, and you see the thoughts. And I see the thoughts. Yes. The th thoughts keep coming. I can see the body sensation. Okay. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't keep coming. There is, you only perceive a thought at a time. The, no. thought, the, thought, uh, the thought that says they keep coming is, that, is a single thought. No, you're right. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> but, it's not the same thought that keeps coming because a thought can only come once. Yes, but I, yes. but, but I, the story keeps repeating, okay? This person should have done that, this, whatever, okay? So I go through the story and I experience the body sensation. And as you say, right now, it's hard for me to say it's neutral. Then the other thing you've point, pointed out. Hold on, hold on, listen, okay. You said it's hard to say it's neutral. Hard for me to see. To see that it's neutral. That it's neutral. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I can get it, but it doesn't feel neutral. It feels painful, okay? It feels un unpleasant. I've got tension in the body. Oh, wait. Let's just stay with that for a minute. It feels unpleasant. So there has to, there has to be some sort of interpretation here because you just said unpleasant. Yes, you're you, right. You squeezed in, you just squeezed in something in there. You're right. No, you're right. Yes. So you, so there is the sensation, but then all you're saying is unpleasant. So, so there is, so you just squeezed in here a condition. You know, you squeezed in something. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yes, I, I okay. Have, okay. Yes, okay. I, okay. I have Continue. This, yes. okay. I have this. I have this tightening in my abdomen. Okay. And I, I made a judgment that that's unpleasant, okay? But now you can understand now, I see, thank you for pointing out that that's a, a judgment on my part, okay? 
Yes, and that's a key thing you say, George, right there, because when you you skip over that you just sort of squeezed in here a, a judgment, you know, it's unpleasant, because as soon as it's unpleasant, that's it, you created the battlefield. Ah, uh, yes, I see it now, yes. Okay, so now the question is, can I just recognize that body sensation without the label that's unpleasant? I don't know, maybe I can. I don't know, that's a good point. Thank you for that. Yes, I can see that. That's just another interpretation. What you're saying about neutrality, yes, it's just a body sensation. And the other thing about this body sensation is I know it's gonna be gone an hour from now or two hours from now. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, I've got an injury and my finger hurts or I've got a toothache. You know, the toothache, I worry whether this toothache is gonna to go away. But no, you're right, I can see that now. And then the other thing you said is that there's a part of me that enjoys this. And I can see that also. In other words, well, two things. First of all, I can see that I have this thing I'm complaining about. I got this story and I can give you this whole story about how the world is treating me so ill or whatever, this thing shouldn't happen. But on the other hand, I have so many stories for which I can be grateful for. So many things I can tell you where I'm just so happy how the world is turning out. I mean, I could go on. There are so many, so many grateful stories. And there's this little stuff here that I'm unhappy about. And just noticing that how my mind seems to concentrate, specialize, pay attention, attend to, that's the word, mm -hmm. attend to these things that aren't working. And I think that's partly the way the mind works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what you also said about enjoyment, there is a, that is wanting it. You need to use the word. Now somehow the attachment to the ego and the separate self, there's something I want about that. And I can see that also. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Gilbert and Sullivan. They wrote some op operettas and one guy complains that he's got nothing whatever to grumble at. <laughs> That's his complaint. It's a whole song. I've got nothing to grumble at, okay? <laughs> and I can really see that. Yes. You know? <laughs> it's, there, there, there's a, there's a yes. perverse pleasure in grumbling. Yeah. And see, now I'm not going to go through and tell you the whole story because you wouldn't be interested. But I can go to my wife and I can complain to her and I can tell her, you know, well, this thing shouldn't be whatever. And so I can see the perverse pleasure in that. I don't want to quite use the yeah. word pleasure. Sure, yeah, we, 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 we like to sit together and, and sort of complain, you know, yeah. I mean, yes, we engage in that. And if, if you pay attention, you will find that, yeah, we, we do <laughs> so sitting around a cup of tea or coffee and engaging in that. <laughs> Yeah, and, I mean, uh, it's but it's 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 really not happy because it, it's it maintains the illusion of good and bad, the illusion of separation, illusion of somebody good and somebody bad. The world is good, the world is bad. It, it, if, so in 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 your in your life when you are, once you are a contemplating truth, there is, you're moving in a different direction. You, you're, you're, you are, there are certain old habits, old patterns that at some point you realize that you are maintaining them, but they're not, but then they're, their veils, they, they veil the peace of our true nature. At some point, you sort of decide that, yeah, okay, that's, that's not, that is not the way, you know, it's, there isn't, you know, it's a bad person out there, a wrong person out there and a right person here or vice versa, there, that's, that model, 
is the is a, a wrong model. It's a model that's making an assumption that that a personal doer, a personal a personal will, and a personal chooser, while in fact your understanding is that the reality, the reality of your experience is not that there is a personal chooser, that, that is, it's consciousness that, that is taken on the, the form of a thought and perceives it, creates it and perceives it. There isn't, even though the thought may say, you are, he is, she is, you realize that this, this old, this, this, this old lingo that's arising within the thought is, is false. It's just a play. It's like on the play, on the, on in the theater, on the, you're watching the theater and the theater, there is, you know, there are all these various actors that are, that are impersonating the various characters, but, but you, awareness, consciousness is perceiving this show, but don't, while well, in, in the old days you would be, you would be like one of these characters and now you're, it's this capacity this, to perceive your entire experience as God's experience, not your own personal self. It is yes. God that is choosing to, to perceive via this body mind and, and inviting you, it's inviting you to recognize uh, upsetness, being upsetness, to feel upsetness, to experience upsetness, and to contemplate upsetness, to see the falsehood of it, to see the illusion, the illusion of it. As opposed yes. to just spinning it and spinning it and, and then you're okay because, because that guy moved, moved to freaking Alaska and, I, and now I'm okay because I got rid of him. <laughs> the other thing I noticed, for example, we have this, COVID virus out there. And, you know, I can label that terrible and I could get really unhappy and upset about it, but I don't. You know, somehow the COVID virus out there, which is just, you know, if you look at it objectively, that's a serious problem. But I don't get upset about it somehow because I don't take it personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't see that I caused it. I don't see that there's anything I can do about it. It's like the weather. Yes. I don't like it, but. I don't get upset about it. I'm just again noticing the difference between that and what I do get upset about. Yes. And what I do get upset about is something that I can take personally. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I should have done something different. They should have treated me differently. Right. I'm just sort of sharing with you, you know, what I'm noticing. I really appreciate this conversation. Yeah. I mean, we create a, a model, the images about each other, and then we sort of corner or set. It's like plaster we make plaster model of of each other and we keep you know doing that to each other and 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 it gets done to us too and we really we, nobody likes to to be perceived you know as if as if fixed anything you know as this particular oh, this guy is like this or that guy is like that or she's like this or he's like that we, we don't like to to be perceived as an image because then we have to we we get we get offended because we are not an image we we are any image or any myriad of images we're not that we're not that but yet we sometimes we perceive ourselves in as images as this image that image that or a model and and we perceive others the same way and we engaging in that way uh, it's, 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 it's not happy for anybody. It's, it's, we don't like it to be done to us. And of course, inadvertently, we, we do it too. I mean, we, we're not just, you know, the victim. We, we also are victimizer in, in a way, in a way. And the, it's a, the somehow overlooking that uh, there is 
no good or bad. It's a bad. It's not the right model. It's, it's, a, it's the bad and good is 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 a, is a, relates to some belief structure. And uh, there is no guilty one or innocent one. Is it's. it's or one could say God is all innocence. Right. So what what are we? I mean, what are we outside of the universal being? Universe, I mean, what are we at beyond I mean, or, or outside the entirety? You, you, we cannot exist in a vacuum. We, 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 we ex exist as, as all of existence. We don't exist as separate. It's not like a separate. There is a separate bundle, and this is another separate bundle, and we're bouncing to each other, saying, "Oh, hello, well, let's have a let's have a relationship for the next thirty years." And no, it's not like that. It's it's all so interconnected. I mean, it's it's all interconnected. You you, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Let me ask one other thing related to this. With regard to the emotion, the body sensation, in the past, I, mean, I have a, a recording of you in the past, where you actually recommended actually going into the body sensation, experiencing it. And I understand now that you're no longer recommending that. Is that correct? I, I don't recommend it as the sole approach because it can be hijacked by the mind to become a way to feel better temporarily. There has to be, it has to be accompanied with an understanding. The understanding that first, in fact, there is nothing happening because nothing personal happened because it's just thoughts and sensations and the understanding of that I don't exist in a vacuum, that I exist as consciousness. And, and also that then, then there is the sort of going to the sensation and going so intimate with the sensation that it dissolves in your intimacy, it dissolves in your in your availability, in your interest, in your in your in, in your openness. Uh, so, but not solely. I don't, I don't recommend solely the approach of going into the into the. Okay, it seems to me that one of the advantage of going into the sensation is that it dissolves the resistance of the sensation. In other words, I have this bad feeling in my tummy, this tightness, and but then I also have the thought that that shouldn't be there. So I have the sensation and I have the resistance. Of the right. sensation. Yes. So by going into the sensation, I'm just checking with you. I mean, yes. now by going into the sensation and acknowledging it and say, hey, there it is. In one sense, I think I'm helping dissolve the sensation because I'm removing the resistance to it. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, as soon as you become interested in in the in exploring the sensation, already already the resistance aspect is impacted, is diminished because. From the resistance aspect, I just want to stay with I'm upset as a formulation, as a conceptualization. I want to remain there. I don't want to go to the sensation or the feeling or the emotion. Right? So right. as soon as you become interested or you, you take a step towards in the direction of the somatic experience, what's what's happening. You are suspending 
you are stepping away from a position, the, the rigid position, which is a formulation of what's going on, which is a conceptual model of what's going on. Because what's going on is not a conceptual model. What's going on is just consciousness dancing. It's beyond words, really. What's going on is beyond words. But the conceptual model is where we take our stand, where, where, we, where we build the building blocks of the me. Right. Now, it is also possible, this is, this, and this is to, to go, to take steps and successfully towards the sensation and see it's, there is really nothing there and still have the sense of me. Okay, just let's hop over that. Having said that, the exploration of truth, reality of consciousness is has a multi multi facets. There is a there is a comprehension aspect, which we've already worked a lot with together over the time we've been together, the comprehension to understand what I truly refers to. And that understanding also has to be lived and explored in your life. And that's, that's a post understanding or post enlightenment or post comprehend comprehension. Uh, okay, Johnson, yes, okay. Uh, and so living your understanding is a, a very important aspect, probably, uh, not probably, much more significant than the understanding. Of course, the understanding is important, but living the understanding. So it's unavoidable if you, you have to participate with life. You know, life is gonna come at you with uh, challenges, like the challenge you just described. Life is gonna present you with challenges. And these challenges, you have to take advantage of these challenges to deepen and to your understanding in your life. So now you understand, you, you, so you can, you are capable in your life, in the midst of contrarieties, in the midst of um, uh, seemingly disagreeable situations to come to the comprehension of the peace of being. Because the peace of being must permeate your entire experience in all states, in all realms. And in the waking dream, in the waking realm, uh, in your life, the opportunities that arise to you uh, require your your participation and the application of living your understanding as best you can. And it's not about feeling better. It is not about transcending emotions. It's about deepening your understanding and enraciner, uh, how do you say to Root to root your understanding in your in the entirety of your body, mind, and world. 
Okay, very, yes. <laughs> I now see what, yes. Okay, very good. I, I really appreciate the direction. Yeah, so, so don't, don't just, don't remain in, uh, there is, you know, the, my life, which is all good. And then there is some bad things that are happening, you know. No, uh, the, whatever is happening in your life that seems to fall in the bad, is this more important for you now than what seems to be good happening in your life? The, the so adversity that arise for you now in your life are very important for you to establish your, your understanding and that of that what you are, that what you are is not a subject, is not in the realm of the phenomena that your reality is unaffected by what appears and, and what appears from the perspective of good and bad is from the wrong perspective. The perspective that perceives good and bad is the wrong perspective, is the old model. The new model is available to you, both in your understanding and in your body, in your being is available to you because your body is universal beingness. Your body is universal body. So, so in your comprehension of your body in your sensory experience of your body, the walls of your body, the, the, the definition of your body, the borders of your body expand so that Everything that is happening in your body is what's happening in the world is happening in your body as your body. So you, your body is universal body. There's no, the, the protective borders uh, expand so that in fact, to the point where there is no, no borders, no, no borders to, to protect, you know, like, like, you know, you have to protect your skin from the sun, you know, not to get sunburn, but the borders of your body expand. So there is nothing that can, uh, no sun can burn your skin anymore. Uh, figuratively speaking, I'm I, I understand, figuratively yes. speaking. So the, the sense of me is an important part of your contemplation now. The sense of me, the sense of me is, a, is an appearance that appears to you in your true being. Your true being is not defined by the sense of me that appears to you. The sense of me that appears to you is defined and perceived by being, by your being. So it's, it's the other way around. It's not that your sense of being defines you. It is you that defines your sense of being. And since you know that being is undefined, your interest in the definition of the sense of me, your interest in sensing me and experiencing me as a sensation or as an image or whatever, dwindles, dwindles. I am no longer interested in an image of me or sense of me or ideas of me. No, isn't this interest, not interest. What for? Why, why, why trouble? What for? 
I rather just enjoy your company. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Maggie. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Magdi, I just want to quickly say, um, it's so precious, your satsangs. I'm so happy that I found you. And um, it's so wonderful just to be here. And I enjoy your sensitivity and um, it just deeply resonates uh, what you're sharing. And I just want to thank you for this. Not you as a person, but just the universe unfolding. I understand. Hello, Esther. It's nice to see you. <laughs> Any questions? Hello, Magdi. Marga, hello, Marga. Hi. Um, you were touching on this with George, so, um, and some of the things you've said in the past few weeks have um, um, made me just wonder a bit, because you mentioned a while ago that often your teacher and you yourself um, have a tendency towards understanding things. Um, I can't remember how you put it exactly, but it was like um, through understanding and maybe people who were more scientifically inclined, um, like a logical step-by-step. -step. Um, here, the tendency is um, or has become very body-oriented. So when you mention that talking to George, there's sort of like a, a muscle relaxation of self. And it's very visceral in that it becomes almost like a vortex feeling. So it's not logical <laughs> necessarily. So what has attracted me um, that I started noticing that every time I listen to people who would be classified as Advaita, Vendata, I could sense something is very true, but the way this body mind has a tendency is is kind of um, more amorphous or something. I can't describe it, but so it's like I'm just trying to figure out um, I'm okay with just experiencing it. Um, in this sensation sense. And I do have analytical tendencies as well. So those get activated, but I guess I don't have the schooling for understanding. Um, like do each of us have tendencies for different types of teaching that helps unlock or is it different teachings at different times? Um, there's a directness to this that, that seems to be so helpful. We must take as a metaphor the fruit tree that bears cherries, pears, oranges, apples, mangoes within one tree. A fruit tree <laughs> that bears 
all sorts of different fruits. So it attracts the orangutan who likes the bananas, it attracts some monkeys that like the mangoes, it attracts the birds that like, like the berries, etc. So the, the teaching Meaning, God's light appears as all of the fruits that attract various, various people in different ways. So you may find that what resonates for you is this the peace of being. And it may initially seem to be more of a feeling or not that I'm saying that that's your experience, I'm just speaking generically. It may seem initially to be sort of a that body level, at the somatic level, sensation level. But the peace of being is absolute. So it enlightens the mind. Yes, it reveals at a certain level within the see within the somatic realm, within the sensory realm, it reveals a certain sweetness, a certain perfume that's hard to describe, hard to speak of. To speak of, we speak of it as peace as happiness, uh, we use words that allude to, to, the, to the experience of, of consciousness that, that is beyond words. But the understanding of the reality of consciousness and its uh, impersonal its universal aspect goes hand in hand with uh, the experience of peace. Because the, the understanding about the 
reality of consciousness, one reality. Leads to bring our experience to its source, our experience being perception, sensation and mentation. In other words, our experience being the mind, the body and the world because that is going on. So there is a, a marriage, a, a merging, a, a sort of In this solution of the separate realm of objectivity into into the self, into I, into consciousness. And the understanding is a, an important aspect of uh, that merging. Atmananda Menon uh, refers to this reasoning as a higher reasoning. Which is very helpful to uh, correct, bring, bring correction to the mind, which is uh, um, which operates under the model of the subject and object, subject and object model, and the the false model that that uh, consciousness is both body and mind. So there is a contemplation uh, and the, the understanding that, that the correct model is, is that world and body and mind operate under consciousness and, and not the other way around. So I, I would say, Margot, uh, Yes, if something is resonating for you, whichever, whichever way love, beauty and peace are resonating within you, uh -huh. and you are not personifying, you're not adding any personal aspect to that, meaning it's not a personal experience or not something that I am experiencing, rather 
just to just to, the joy of the joy of being. The, as long as it's happy and uh, remains happy, it's good. Because happiness is eternal, the eternity of happiness, the eternity of happiness is And it's interesting that, you know, what you shared because here, I think that we sort of are enjoying both flavors, both chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> We're enjoying the understanding and we're enjoying the peace of being. The, that which is uh, truly at the heart of everything. So you have the chocolate and the vanilla here, you know. That can't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Hello. Hello, Anna. Okay, so there has been the invitation to explore with the understanding that um, like I am is awareness. And I don't really like how, how how do I explore with that? So, so I'm going to whatever appears to you, the the eye that appears to you, whichever form, shape it takes, is not that which you are. That which is real in your experience is not that which appears and disappears. That which is real in your experience is real across time and space, independent of time and space. That which is born dies and therefore it is in the realm of manifestation, appearance, what we refer to as existence. It exists, it arises. And that which is the reality, whatever reality, whatever reality is, is not, has no beginning or ending. It's not something that starts and ends. It's not something that is the result of the Big Bang or the result of 
the sperm and the ovum coming together. It's not the result of a wonderful experience. It's, it's not the result of somebody's will. It has no cause. Whatever has cause is the result of a, a certain effect. And the effect has a cause. So in the realm of causality, cause effect, cause effect, cause effect, cause effect, that's a very simple model. Actually, it's multiple causes, multiple effects. That's in the realm of existence, of mind, of interpretation. Uh, I'm, I'm moving maybe far from your initial question. <laughs> <laughs> whatever appears to you is an appearance is born and dies so in your experience memories, images uh, sensations uh, perceptions uh, appear to you they appear and disappear what is it in your experience that does not appear and disappear Awareness, being aware. And what is it that is aware? I am. That's just the word I, but any other way of saying it? Besides saying I, what is it that is aware? I don't, I don't know, like other than awareness? Yes, that's good. <laughs> awareness is aware, yeah, you got it, bingo. <laughs> Only awareness is aware, right? Yes. You get that? Yes. yes. So, So your experience is that of awareness being aware. Would you, would you agree with this way of wording it? Yeah. So awareness is aware across the board and what is it that awareness is aware of? Body sensations, perceptions. What are these? Sensations. Where do they come from? From awareness. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say that awareness is right now aware of this perception, yes? Mm -hmm. So the question is, where, where does this perception come from? So there are two possibilities. Either it comes from somewhere else, or it's basically coming from Awareness itself here, it's awareness, awaiting itself as this perception. If it's coming from somewhere else, meaning if this perception is coming from somewhere else, it's being emitted by, there is a, an emitter somewhere out there in some other galaxies and that's emitting this perception, this image. Then it is this, a mirror is outside of awareness. And if it's outside of awareness, separate from awareness, it, it cannot have a contact with awareness. If it contacts awareness, that means it is part of awareness. Now, there is a caveat here, awareness, by awareness, we don't mean an oak tree, we don't mean a beautiful concept. 
By awareness, we're referring to the reality, reality, reality of our experience, that which is real, that which does not come and go, that which is real, has no beginning, no ending, no size, no shape, no density. So for that emitter out there on, in a different galaxy to emit this image here, it must be part of this reality. Yeah. And, so, in our, and, in, and in our experience, our experience of this perception is not that we are right now experiencing a perception out there. What we are experiencing, all of us right now is we're experiencing our experience. We are experiencing our experience. Our experience, which we can call a perception, is not apart from us. It's not two centimeters away from us and we're getting it or we got it. We just traveled those two centimeters and grabbed our perception. It's not like that. Our experience right now of this perception is that this perception and I that perceives the perce this perception is one. So in fact, I'm not experiencing a perception. I'm experiencing myself, quotes and quotes, for the sake of discussion, as this perception. So I am experiencing myself as this perception. Are you, are you on board? Well, I want to back up a little bit. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you said that, I don't remember what you said, but it's like, it seems, so when you say something, like if uh, it seems like it's two things, like there's the words or the hearing and there's like the perception of it. I don't know. Is that your experience? You're, you're experiencing two things? Hello, you, you experience two right now? You do experience two things? <laughs> no. So what do you mean by it seems? You said it seems. What do you mean by it seems, by the way? What do you mean by it seems? I don't know. Let me let me just consider it for a moment. Okay. Like it seems separate. What is separate? It doesn't seem like it's one. What? What is it you're talking about? Like the, it, it, what do you mean by it? okay, like even just me talking, like there's the talking and there's the, the hearing it and the perceiving it. So, so there is the talking and then a millisecond later you hear it. This is your experience. Your, your experience is that you, you're talking and then you're hearing and talking and hearing, talking and hearing and it's happening really, really fast. Is this your experience? That's not my experience. But tell me, maybe, maybe we have a different experience. No, it just comes up. What comes up? Like there's the hearing and then there's the perceiving and then there's, and then a thought. Is, are you experiencing some, experiencing time? Are you experiencing that there is a second between the speaking and the hearing and the thought? No, and there's like an image. Am I, I'm not experiencing time and it seems like it. It seems like there is time? Yeah. But it seems... What is your experience of that, of that time? Just an, an image, a, mem a, mem a memory. Yeah, for example, I, I could, let's say this is an image of breakfast this morning. 
this image is, arises right now. And then there is the the thought of time, you know, like time and now it's whatever, four o'clock up and it was eight o'clock this morning. So it's the thought arises about time and maybe even a sensation. But all of that is, is happening in, in this instant of awareness, right? Yeah. So, so given that 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 everything that, that, that oh uh, Shiva, my volume is going down. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to speak a little louder uh, because nothing I did nothing to change anything here, Shiva. So I don't know. Um, let me try to speak louder. So. Uh, Given that everything that you just talked about now, the image of breakfast this morning, the thought of time is arising in this moment of awareness, this is moment of presence. And that, but in this moment of presence, is there time in this moment of presence? That's a good question. Would you say there is time in this moment of presence? In this, in, as, as this experience? No. no? So, so time so is an impression that arises in non, -pre in non time. So time is an impression that arises in no time. So it's an impression that arises in the mind or as a thought with a sensation? Yeah, well, yeah, you said a thought and image of sensation. So it's yeah. arising in, in and as presence right now, which is no time. So time is arising in no time. So that's why we say it's an impression. And that's why I'm saying impression. Because time cannot arise in no time. It, 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 something cannot arise in nothing. So time cannot arise in no time. So that's why I say the impression of time, what we, what we call time, what we... Are you following or? Yeah, just a little disappointed though, because I'm seeing how like the past, like I'm seeing more clearly that the past is not real. Well, but, but it was very enjoyable, like, like five minutes ago was this moment's past, right? Five minutes yeah. ago was, and, and we had a good time five minutes ago. We were enjoying, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it was more of like my victim story. Like. Like it's not, yeah, that's what I was seeing. It wasn't so much moments of the past that were happy. <laughs> oh, well then, then, then thank goodness they're in the past. <laughs> I would be doubly, doubly happy. <laughs> so I don't have to, I can let it go. I don't have to continue the victim, being the victim or, you know, because I'm happy it's gone and, and, and it's, and it's not what's happening because what's happening is always consciousness. So going back to that question of like um, experimenting, living from the understanding. So like, were you pointing to because like everything you said in the meditation today, like there was a yes to it. Like I, I see it. But then as I live my daily life, I live as this person. Okay, so contemplate that life is appearing to you. 
you are not appearing in life. So you are not living the life. Life is living within you. It's appearing to you. It's appearing to you as perceptions, sensations, memories, uh, conversations, uh, thoughts. It's appearing to you. Right? So when you are in your night dream, all sorts of things are appearing to you, right? In your night, in your dream mind, right? Yes. It's appearing to you. But all is yeah. well. All is well, anyways, right? I mean, even <laughs> when one of the pink flying elephants is ill and needs medicine, all is well because because it's appearing oh. to you. It's not like you are one of the pink flying elephants and now you need you need the pink flying elephant doctor it's not like that it's appearing to you so contemplate in your daily life like right now this perception this sensation this is appearing to you right are you are you do you do you follow that it's appearing to you yeah like this body like this amna body is appearing to me like these thoughts are appearing to me and this perception of you on the screen is appearing to me. Yes. And they appear to you as thoughts, perceptions, and sensations. Amna, what you say, Amna's body appears to you as sensation, as images. Yeah. So, but the you is not an appearance, right? Yes. So what appears, we can say, as a language, it's phenomenal. There is a realm of order and cause and effect and there's a certain there. mathematical model to what appears, but that which, that, that to which the you that perceives all this, there's no model to that because it, you're not phenomenal. That which appears to you is subject to various- Life and death. Huh? Life and death and change. Yeah, the weather, the, the mother, your cousin, your neighbor, your boss, whatever. The, the gas station being closed when you when you're running out of gas, whatever. So there are conditions, Dif different factors, different elements that are operating in the realm of appearance, in the realm of existence. What we refer existence, they are arising. But no, there are no such factors operating in the realm of reality. Reality meaning the, that which is and perceives okay i have a question like there are sensations in the in the body and then like i i think a thought that says like that's me yeah so so there is a sensation in the body it's a sensation that arises in the awareness and the thought that says that's me yeah that's a false thought yeah i mean like you know, the other day, uh, Trump said, uh, hey, you know, I am one, I won, I won, I won. Everybody heard that, but it's false. <laughs> but if you get confused about the false, then you, you are going to uh, go out in the street and you're going to create all sorts of problems. <laughs> so, but you discern, you see. So if we don't discern, you're right, that the thought that says, that's me, uh, then there's a different experience. Then we are, then we, we, we are subject, then we become, then we become really, con really subject to the body. And you know how the body goes, it only goes in one direction. South, it only goes south. <laughs> we, we are just trying to make a soft landing, you know, we made a soft landing. <laughs> but landing is gonna be, you see, you don't wanna crash on a landing. 
right? But, but the body, so the, when you are identified with the body, it says me, and you say, yes, oh, yes. You tell the thought, yes, you are right. It is me. Then, you know, what can I say? Then you, 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 you have the, the knowledge now, you have the capacity, you have the understanding. But, but the understanding isn't something you can just take and put in your drawer and close the drawer and forget about it, right? Yeah, you have well, to that's use what it. I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, use it. Use it. Use it so, so whenever, whenever those sensations and this thought comes up, to see that they arise within me. Yes. So I perceive them. So therefore, it can't be me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And. I want to say two more things, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. The first one is I really, really, really appreciate every time when you uh, like point to how we take this to be so important and that it's not important. I, I just experience so much happiness and freedom every time you say that. And I don't remember what the second one is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, very lovely to be with you all. It's just so beautiful to see you. I'm so happy to see you. I'm now older, John, and George, Shiba, Marga, Emmanuel, and Zoe. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you.